Okay, everybody, I like a good TikTok video, just like I'm sure a lot of you do out there. You get sucked in and you keep watching them. I think there's a lot of great advice out there, but I think there's a lot of crazy misinformation out there as well. So I think it's really important to weed through that, and I'd like to show you some videos today, some videos that I would group as dangerous TikTok trends. Let's just dive in. This is the Hyaluron pen. In fact, I have it right here. Okay, this is a pen that you can buy off the internet and it's actually used for different purposes in dermatology. It is a, like an air gun, like a, like a BB gun. It really has, com it has compressed air in it. You pump it and then you shoot it out. So you can put liquid in here and it will push it out and you can choose the amount of liquid so I think the more liquid and the more pumps that you put, the, you know, the more um, fluid can come out of here, but certainly the deeper that something can go under your skin. So even though there's no needle involved, this, is, this could be considered like an injectable and can be quite aggressive. Imagine taking a BB gun and putting it right against your cheek or your lip and shooting it. That's what I can imagine it would feel like. So we use this in dermatology for different reasons. We use this to put uh, uh, usually intralesional corticosteroids. If somebody has alopecia or something like that, we will put um, a medication in here and it can be put just subcutaneous or under the skin. So that's what this is used as. So there's a purpose to this, but I have seen people like this woman who is injecting it by herself on TikTok into her lips. So those lips look uh, good, but this is really like probably partly because she just essentially been snapping it with a rubber band. So it's swollen and she's injecting um, a hyaluronic acid that is not supposed to be used as an injectable. So there could be preservatives in there. There could be other kind of components in there that uh, are not meant to be injected under the skin or put under the skin. They're ma mainly meant to be applied up to the surface of your skin. So that is in itself dangerous. You could be allergic to a product in here and then you could have a big reaction to it. You can also inject on, into a vessel, maybe pulverizing that vessel so you can have a big bleed, a big hematoma, a lot of bruising. Uh, I think that this is also not very permanent. I can't imagine that the same amount of hyaluronic acid that we use in fillers can be put into this topical hyaluronic serum that can be injected in this way and that it would have the same effect that a true filler or injectable with hyaluronic acid would. So there's so much bad news with this. I This worries me a lot. In fact, I do believe that um, the American Academy of Dermatology has come out with a statement to really warn people not to use this in this way. And I've seen a lot of these videos and they're really concerning. I really think that people can do some major damage here. It is worlds different than using, than having a skilled injector inject hyaluronic acid and a filler into an area, into your lips or into your cheeks or, or what, what we do to kind of increase the volume of areas. So another way, a more quick and simple way to kind of make your lips look more plump is to use some of those lipsticks that have a lip plumper in them. Oftentimes they have capsaicin in them or other ingredients that sort of um, make your lips get a little irritated or sort of sting and they make them a little plumper and a little more swollen. Also, you can use a great hyaluronic acid serum. Hyaluronic acid serums are great to really impart more moisture or, or have you retain moisture in your skin and it makes your skin look more supple and more plump uh, and you're not gonna have a risk for bruising there. I actually made a video in response to these hyaluron pens and uh, what I did is I took a little bit of jello and some blue dye and I wanted to show people the depth of penetration that you can have potentially with this air gun essentially. See the jello there? So it, look at that, how it 
goes to that, I mean, it goes to this depth that is just scary. And you know, I'm sure some people know to dial this down, but I think that that's the concern here. And you can see now that I'm doing it with a little needle and you can see how you're much more precise with this. The injection is often retrograde, so we're pulling out at the same time so that you're not gonna have as much product uh, distributed so kind of haphazardly. Th this is filler actually that I'm using right now to inject and it's clear obviously, there's no dye to this. So just know that it's just so scary to me to see that people are using this pen in this way. I just think it's all kinds of trouble with not any really reward or not any significant difference in your lips. Okay. She has used a, a tattoo ink that she bought off of eBay and she essentially tattooed her own freckles on. Have you ever tried to even pencil freckles on? You know how if you're not really an artist or you don't have, have a lot of practice with doing this, you would probably make it too symmetrical and too perfect and you know, like even when, you have, when you're trying to put your eyebrows on or you're trying to line your eyebrows and you end up going too far or using eye eyeliner and kind of going too far. The problem is when you do a tattoo, you can't really erase it. And she now has all these crazy um, scars on her face. I mean, this is frightening. She, they said that she had an infection from this home microneedling and and it's just, I mean, I, I can't believe this. This is, already looks so frightening. Woman ended up, you know, spending more money in the long run trying to make this better and really dealing with a lot of anxiety and a lot of um, just not feeling good about herself afterwards because she had to wear so much makeup afterward to cover this. That led to a lot of embarrassment in itself. And she had all these scars that took a long time to fade. And I bet you they never have completely gone away. So please don't tattoo. Please don't tattoo freckles. It is so easy to make fake freckles. All you need is an eyeliner pencil in the right color. They even make special freckle pencils and you don't even need to spend money on that. Just get an eyeliner pencil from your makeup drawer and just put them on. And the nice thing about that is if you don't like the placement, you can go back and just you know wipe one of them away. Also, I've seen this one video of this woman who used the um, the root cover up spray and kind of pressed the button just slightly so that it would just kind of sputter out and it sputtered across her face and it gave her freckles. You gotta have a little practice with that though. Don't do your makeup and then just, just have this thing sputter at your face because I've seen it make crazy freckles that it looked more like, you know, age spots. You know what's even better than freckles is really taking great care of your skin so it looks beautiful no matter what. You can always put temporary freckles on after this. So really make sure that you have some good exfoliating product to keep your skin blemish free so that you can add freckles later if you want to in places that you want them to be. We have these really wonderful acne swipes, which are not necessarily even for acne. You can just use it on your regular skin with no pimples and they will help to lighten brown spots that you have. So that now afterwards when you apply makeup on, you can put your freckles exactly where you want. So if you have blemishes, if you have acne and you're trying to cover these things up with makeup, well, use something to help treat those areas first, like my resurfacing acne swipes. These work great for people with acne and also even people with just regular brown spots. It'll help to lighten them. So swipe that on to your clean face and then apply your makeup and then put your freckles where you want them exactly with an eyeliner pencil. Okay, I'm here with another dangerous TikTok trend. So here goes. Here's the video. Haters will say it doesn't work. I'm convinced that if you put a base sunscreen of SPF 30 on and then SPF 90 on all the spots that you would put highlighter on, the sun will contour your face where you'd put bronzer and you'll be naturally snatched all summer. I mean, I, you know, she's really good at contour, I'm gonna have to say. That looks pretty nice the way it's all placed like that, but it looks like it needs to be blended. And this is not the right thing to do. You know, I don't think a, a lot of people understand this because, well, you know, a lot of people might even use tanning beds and they think, okay, well, I'm gonna get a base tan. It's gonna protect me better in the long run because you're not burning. But people, I don't think people realize that any kind of tan is actually your skin in trouble. 
Uh, you know, your skin is, is tanning because it's really trying to scramble and create this umbrella to really protect itself from the sun. So if you're getting tan at all, no matter where it is, no matter if you're trying to tan so that you have a six pack that looks more visible or you're contouring the skin on your face, you're actually creating more da damage in those areas. So don't do it. Just use your contour. That's why we have it. That's why ha we have all this awesome makeup out there. Contour like this is not good because really getting any any kind of tan at all, any kind of color change, whether it be red because you have a sunburn or whether it be brown because you got more of a tan, both of those are no good. I've got a great sunscreen for you that you can use on a daily basis. It is SPF 30 Broad Spectrum Protection. It's called SLMD Skincare Dual Defender. It is oil-free, non-comedogenic, a great moisturizer, but lightweight with SPF 30. It has a little bit of everything that you need. I really like doing these reaction videos to dangerous TikToks. So if you see a dangerous TikTok or you just see a video about any kind of skin condition or you're just curious about my response to it, please tag me, but tag the hashtag Dr. Pimple Popper Reacts. I'll see it, I'll react to it, and hopefully I will give you the answers that you wanna hear.